Hello, my name is Leslie Citrome. I'm a clinical professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at New York Medical College in Valhalla, New York. I would like to welcome you to today's program where our goal is to help you promptly identify and proactively manage agitated patients who present for emergency care. To begin, we're going to briefly review the pathophysiology of agitation. A frequent cause of emergency psychiatric interventions and hospitalizations, agitation is a state of extreme arousal characterized by excessive and often poorly organized motor and or verbal activity stemming from physical or mental unease or distress. Some estimates suggest that as many as half of psychiatric emergency visits involve agitated patients who are at increased risk for aggression, violence, prolonged hospitalization, suicide, and numerous other poor outcomes. There are many potential causes of agitation, including psychosis, substance abuse or withdrawal, delirium, and side effects of certain medications, such as akathisia from some antipsychotic medications. Some underlying medical causes of agitation can be life-threatening, highlighting the need for a rapid and accurate differential diagnosis. Today, however, we will primarily focus on agitated patients with psychiatric illnesses, notably bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. During acute episodes of agitation, patients may display a wide range of physical or verbal behaviors, some of which can be characterized as aggressive, such as fighting, screaming, or destroying objects, and some of which not so, such as pacing, inappropriate disrobing, restlessness, or excessive talking. Although agitation is often regarded as a risk factor for future aggressive behavior, most agitated patients seen by emergency psychiatric services will not become aggressive or violent, and the precise relationship between agitation and aggression is poorly understood. Nevertheless, unaddressed agitation may escalate to violent outbursts, especially in patients with severe mental illness, potentially necessitating physical restraint or seclusion to protect the affected individual, healthcare staff, and others in the immediate environment. Indeed, studies suggest that emergency psychiatric services experience an average of eight assaults involving agitated individuals each year. Therefore, it is imperative that we do a better job of quickly recognizing the signs and symptoms of agitation in emergency care settings with the goal of refining diagnosis and accelerating appropriate treatment. Few published studies have specifically examined the neurobiological processes that lead to acute agitation. Instead, insights into the mechanistic underpinnings of agitation have largely been derived from our understanding of the disorders that can manifest with agitation and receptor binding profiles of effective medications. Genetic and environmental factors undoubtedly play a role in the development of both schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, although no single gene or event can account for the full clinical picture of either disorder. Clinical research has implicated dysfunction in multiple neurochemical pathways and neural networks, including monoamines such as dopamine, glutamate, and GABA, as well as altered receptor expression profiles. For agitation associated with psychiatric diseases, proposed neurochemical aberrations include excessive dopaminergic signaling in the basal ganglia, low levels of the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA, mutations in genes involved in catecholamine metabolism, and reduced regulatory feedback from the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex to emotional centers in limbic systems. The potential roles of these processes in agitation development are supported by the mechanisms of action of agents that are effective in stabilizing agitated patients. For example, antipsychotic medications that antagonize central dopamine D2 and serotonin 5-HT2A receptor signaling can address other dysfunctional neurotransmitter systems that have been linked to acute psychotic and agitated states. I want to thank you for your time today and hope that you enjoy the remainder of the program.